to start a rock and roll group. You've been picked to be in my band. We don't know how to play. You don't have to know. What's important is I've chosen you. I'm John. Paul. My body, Holly, look. Good. Let's talk about when your passion for John Lennon started. There's even a 1993 photo of you yeah. recreating the famous Annie Leibovitz uh, Lennon Yoko shot. Yeah, I only recently remember that I did that. I don't know, I, I sort of lead life at such a fast pace, I tend to forget what's behind me, but someone pointed out I'd recreated that. And Lennon had always figured large in my life because my mom cried when he died and I, it's that thing when you see your mom cry about something it's significant and uh, so I knew that he was a significant person and that the music that she played was Lennon um, so he's always sort of been in in my world and and I'm British Beatles is in our blood like the Queen you know you can't help it it's there it's inbred in your DNA what was the most compelling thing about John Lennon that you found out as you started making the movie I guess really just understanding how much pain he went through and that, that was heartbreaking and, um, and that I had discovered on reading the script. I really sort of read the script and, and closed the last page and just thought, you know, what an incredible story that I didn't actually know and, and, and just felt that sort of, yeah, just felt that pain really. Ultimately, yes, it's about someone who's one of the most famous people in the world, mm. but it's about mothers and sons. As a mother yourself, how did that bring sympathies to both uh, Mimi and Joy as you wanted them portrayed? Well, I felt that when I was making the film, I didn't want to cast judgment because obviously this we're talking about a different era where, where things operated differently. But at the same time, you know, here were two women sort of, um, you know, struggling and, and fighting over him at, at one point in his life. The difficulty that um, Aunt Mimi had in bringing up a child that wasn't hers and then also trying to understand Julia for not you know, fighting to get John back, you know, trying to understand all the decisions that were made. And I think, you know, as a mother, not really being able to understand a lot of those decisions and battling with that too. My last question is, you bring up it was a different era. To me, almost an unspoken character in the movie is the fact this is pretty immediate post-war. We're, we're 1955. Yeah. Mm. And you see that to me in the reaction that Mimi is very stoic whereas um, Julia almost has a live and let live reaction. Yeah. Did you feel like that was an unspoken character or am I reading something into no, it? No, you're abs there? absolutely right. I mean, what I felt and how I had sort of directed it in a sense was that Aunt Mimi was very stoic post-war and that uh, Julia was almost ahead of her times, quite sort of free-spirited, almost 60s in a sense. And that's how we worked on it. So, um, and that was my understanding of the two women, that Aunt Mimi was very strong, strident, quite formidable, but at the same time, you know, incredibly loving and protective of John and that Julia was this yeah free-spirited slightly ahead of her time woman who I felt you know sort of misunderstood and misplaced in in that kind of world <laughs>